Good morning, everyone. Again. Um, thank you all for being here. We know it's a crazy time and thank you for spending the time with us to kind of um, go over some things with you today. Um, so my name is Robertson. Um, I am the middle school, junior high school uh, teacher and counselor. <laughs> my title's so long. Training coordinator at the Puente Statewide office. Um, so if you don't know me, then hi, nice to meet you. Um, I'm also going to be presenting today with Ms. Chirez. She's the wonderful, amazing um, Puente counselor at Oberfeld High School. And we're going to be sharing with you today some uh, counseling tech tools, things that, um, you know, we have been finding helpful, um, you know, for virtual counseling. Um, and we're going to kind of go over some of those things with you today. Um, so just a quick overview on um, what we're going to cover today. Um, I don't know if you heard it when we came in, but it is this meeting is being recorded. Um, and if you have any questions at all throughout the presentation, please, please put it in the chat and then we'll, we'll have a time for question and answers at the end. Um, so we're going to just do an overview of the virtual counseling tech tools really quick. Um, different student parent and communication tools, um, some interactive learning environments, um, if you haven't been exposed to those yet. And then just kind of talking about a hub or like a home base for all of our resources for our students. Um, and then lastly, we're going to talk about some virtual campus tours and how to do those campus tours that we know our students need, but how to do those in a virtual setting. Um, so right now, we're going to just take really quick before we get into all the nuts and bolts of everything, we're just going to take a quick poll to get like a, a pulse on kind of where everybody's at using technology with students and families and the community. So you should see something pop up on your screen. <laughs> I think everyone's is different, but there's a couple like different colors and you can choose, um, you know, kind of how you are feeling. So how comfortable are you using technology with students? Um, and that can, that's not only for students, it could be for your parents and community. Um, so it's looking like most of us use it daily, which is good. Um, sometimes, um, I would probably be somewhere in the middle too sometimes. <laughs> But I will say that now with COVID and all this virtual world, I am definitely learning new things every day. Um, so that's good. All right, now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Chimera. She's going to kind of get into all the nuts and bolts. Oh, you're on mute, Gabby. <laughs> we go through this all the time too, right? <laughs> the presentation. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, yes, my name is Gabby Chirez. I'm a counselor at Overfall High School for Puente and for one of our uh, other academies. Uh, before we get, before I get started with this, um, with the tools that I'm going to present today, I just kind of want to acknowledge kind of where we are all are at as counselors in, in, the, in the middle of a pandemic. I know for myself, and I think this resonates with all of you, you know, feeling overwhelmed, feeling like maybe we're not doing enough or we're not getting to our students, we're missing them. And, you know, there are always a few that just don't respond to us. So, um, you know, hang in there. Uh, we're thinking of you. And um, I also wanted to say that, um, you know, the, the tools that I'm going to present today, um, there, are, there are a lot of things in here. So I'm hoping you don't feel overwhelmed. By no means do I do, do we want you to think, hey, like you should be using all of this, or you know, even if you don't feel comfortable using any of these tools at the moment because you know there's so much to do, then that's okay. Um, the purpose of this of this presentation is to give you tools that you can uh, use um, now if you feel comfortable with, or in the future when um, when this is all over and we get back to like our normal normal. Um, school schedule. So um, before I get started as well, I do want to say all of the tools that I'm using today have free versions. So um, I every tool that I use, um, there, there are like upgrade options where I can pay to get like um, special features, uh, but I actually use a free version for all of them. So, um, you know, I highly recommend that if you feel like you can use one or any of these tools, um, I would just say go with the free version because it has all of the tools that you need. Um, but if you, if you like, you know, having more options, then you can definitely go into the, um, get the like versions that you pay monthly. 
So um, the first uh, tool that I'm going to review today is on student and parent communications. The way this is going to work is that I'm going to kind of talk about these tools and then I'm going to do a quick tutorial for you guys. So um, the communications that I use uh, mostly are Remind and Google Voice. Um, the links in here are links to the actual like websites and then there are links to tutorials. Um, and this presentation will be provided in PDF, so all of these tools will be live on the PDF uh, format. I will have to like stop um, using presenter view so that I can show you the tutorials. So um, for, uh, for these type of tools on Remind, I, um, if I go to the Remind app, this is my Remind app, and uh, there are a few options that I can use here. So I can either, um, well, let me show you how to create a class. So if you go to the left-hand side, create a class, um, you can title it anything, Overfelt Counseling, um, use code Overfelt. Yo, you can make your own code as well. And if you go to create, then um, it, it'll be right here. This is my new class. If I go to add people, and I like to use the um, printable PDF format, or sorry, the in-person instruction, so that you can easily show your students how they add the class on their phone. So you just say, um, type the message over CEO to the number 81010. 81010 is always the number that um, people use for a remind. The code is what's different. Um, and I always also tell my students, make sure that you um, save the number as Ms. Chiris so that you know whenever you get a message, you, um, you know it's me. Um, teachers use Remind as well, so that's another reason why I ask students to, to write my number in because they might be getting messages from like their math teacher or English teacher. So um, once you have your, your class, you can do two things. You can either uh, send individual messages. So these are all my chats that I use. Um, and I can just send students um, messages this way. Or I can do a group chat. Um, so the group chat can be, I can either select the group of students. So I'll say like, and I kind of already know my students, so it'll show up here. Um, it's a little slow. Okay, so there are people here, so I'll just add them here. And if I do this, then, then I can continue and add the messages. Another option is um, if you have a class, so I'll go back and you can just send the message to the entire class, class of 2020 or class of 2021, since that's the year, or both, you can send it to multiple classes. Press continue, and I'll just say hello, and you can either send the message immediately, or you can schedule it for a pre, uh, preset time and dates. I have, um, if you look at my class of 2021, sorry about that, guys, uh, you'll see that I have three messages scheduled already for this, um, for today. So I have one for an hour from now because I have a workshop in an hour. I have one for later today because there's yet another workshop and then one for tomorrow. So um, that's the way that I use Remind and um, it's a really great tool for teachers. So um, I hope that you're able to use it as well. I do want to say, I know that we're all at different levels. Some of us are probably already using this. So um, bear with me, uh, but I do hope for those of you, those. Those of you that are already using a lot of tech tools, um, hopefully you get introduced to new ones. And those of you that, that haven't used any, uh, hopefully there's at least one for you right now. Um, I do also want to mention Google Voice, only because Google Voice, um, the reason why I really like it is because you can call students and while you're on the call, you can text them. So that's, uh, that's a really cool option for me. Um, be, even with parents, if I call parents and I can text like, hey, here's my website and I just text it to them or um, here's a picture of your schedule and I'll just, just text, uh, send a text um, picture to them. So um, that's one tool that Remind doesn't use. With Remind, you can't call, um, but with Google Voice, you can call and you can text. Uh, Google Voice, I believe you can also do group text, but I think it's just like a longer process. Uh, also with Remind, you can invite people through their email as well. So next I'm going to present, oh, I skipped one. I'm sorry, I skipped the very first one. 
Um, so I'm going to go back to student and parent scheduling. So um, this is uh, just a way that I, I've actually used this uh, appointment system for a few years now. So there are two options uh, that we're giving you, Calendly and you can book.me, and to, to, the tutorials are available here as well. Um, I'm going to show you guys a tutorial on you can be book.me. So, um, and the cool thing about all these sites is that you can connect them to your work email. So when you log in, you can say log in through Gmail and then um, create, create your account with your school Gmail and it'll just log you in um, with that account. So this is, um, this is the actual um, site where you kind of create your, your account. Um, this is what it actually looks like when students look at it. So I have my information here. I have my schedule. I know it's not open right now because the week is almost over, but if you go to next week, then I have a bunch of openings um, for Monday through Friday. Uh, once students click on one, um, they can um, click here and you can um, actually edit this to add what you want to ask. And I'll show you, guys, show you that in a bit, but you'll choose either parent student, write the information here, and then they can choose the duration of time as well um, and like what they want to talk about. So once they book it, um, then they'll get an email and I'll get an email saying that they booked it. And the cool thing about this is that it goes directly to your Google Calendar. So you, you can link it to your Google Calendar. And once, once it's on your Google Calendar, then what I like to do is I, I make it a Zoom appointment. So on Google Cal, if you get the Zoom um, extension, you can just create a Zoom appointment, invite the student, and they'll have the Zoom link. This is, um, this is the like editable version, right? So you can, um, at first, you'll be able to choose the calendar you want to use. So I used to have my own calendar for You Can Book Me, book me but now it's just easier to use my personal calendar. So um, I can do that. And after that, um, you get to choose the time. So you can, um, add like Monday, I have Monday to, to Tuesday from nine to six, and then um, Wednesday through Thursday from nine to four. Um, and if I, for some reason, want a break in between, I would just go onto my own Google Calendar and um, add like uh, not available events on there. Or like if I have an appointment in the middle of the day, since in, it's in my Google Calendar, then those um, time slots will no longer show up on the appointment website. So that's kind of how this works. Um, you can always change like the duration, the appointment time, the language, um, the booking form is here. So you can always um, change the, uh, the questions you want to ask or add more questions. And then you all can also say, change the notifications. So what they get before the appointment and like the notifications that they get like an hour before that kind of stuff. And finally, you can also change the style. So this is where like the, the money comes in, right? Like if you want like really cool styles, um, you're gonna have to pay for them. But these are like the free styles that are perfectly fine for me. So I can change to any of these, um, but I know if you pay, you, you'll get more options. So that's You Can Book. Um, and the cool thing about You Can Book Me is that um, you, you can send that information to your students and to your parents. Um, I like to add it to my signature um, on my email. So I have the link on my signature under um, in the bottom of my email. And that way, every time I send an email, it, the link is available to parents and to students. And uh, it's just a really good way for students to know when I'm available and to be able to book the time. So this week I had a lot of appointments booked, so getting there. Uh, the next tool I'm gonna show you guys is Google Classroom. So Google Classroom, I think is amazing. Um, there is also Canvas. I think the thing about Canvas is that like your, your school needs to have like a, a like contract with them. So um, I'm not too acquainted with Canvas, but we did find tutorials so you can use the tutorials. Um, but I will show you Google Classroom. So um, my Google Classroom is right here. Um, I have a bunch of classes here. Um, the, so the class ones are mine, but the other ones are just like school related. So the way to create a Google Classroom, you would just go actually to this um, right, uh, the button on the right hand side that has the plus sign. You would go to either join a class if you know of one or you would create your own class. So I'm gonna say like class of 2025 for next year's freshman. 
um, and I would say I would do the same over here. You don't have to add a section or a room because we don't have classrooms. Uh, once you have your accounts, uh, you create it and uh, you, um, you wait for it to load. Um, and the code for the students is right here. So they will go to the plus, plus sign and say join class and you can provide the code for them here. Uh, so that's kind of how, how that works. You can um, go ahead and send a message and you can add documents in here. So you can add Google Drive uh, document, you can add a file, you can add a YouTube video. I do wanna show you guys the one that I have for class of 2021. Um, so that you guys can see like the different options. So, or what I, I, I have my seniors do. So we've had quite a few lessons for this year. This is the most recent lesson that we have. So I added our presentation. Um, we actually talked about EOP and, and um, rec letters of recommendation um, the, last week. So um, I have a document on some sample emails that we provided to students college application checklist and then a brag sheet that they can provide to their teachers for um, when they send letters of recommendation. So um, all of my old presentations are in here so students can get to them at any time. I know different teachers use Google Classroom in different ways, but this is kind of how I like to use it. Um, I also do want to share under classwork, we do have documents as well. Um, there are two documents in here that we uh, that I wanted to provide to all of you. So they're going to be attached to our our email. You're actually going to get a lot of files in an email <laughs> later today. Um, and these are a part of it. So we have a college tracker and a personal statement document. And these two are amazing for, for seniors especially. We introduce them junior year, but students uh, use them mostly during senior year. So um, this is something that um, was created like throughout the years. And I also created it with um, one of our other counselors at Overfout who used it at her previous school as well. So this first section is just like a hub for students uh, to have all of the like websites they need for senior year. And then they have the opportunity to store their usernames and passwords here. I always tell them like, hey, this is available here for you, but don't feel the need to add your usernames and passwords because we do have access to it since we are managing the Google Classroom. But you can either, you know, copy and paste this to your own drive or just create your own version or just add your, you save your password or username anywhere you can. Just um, we know that they they tend to forget, right? Um, next, I have like um, a space for them to um, store their portal information once they apply to colleges. And then the last thing I have in here is a college list. So I just talked a little bit about Reach Target and Safety School and recommend how many they should apply to. And then they can add them here. And I'll tell them like, this is your own accounts and, or this is your own document and you can add or edit or do whatever you like on here. Um, I'll show you, I go really, quick to Google Class to show you guys um, how to make it um, their own version. So you have two options when you add a document. You can either, um, I'm just gonna add like any document or I'll go back to the college tracker actually. So once you upload it, um, uh, yeah, I'll just add this one. And uh, you can go to the side here. So you can make it so a document that students can view you can make it a document that students can edit or you can make a copy for each student. Um, for those type of documents, I make a copy for each student so that they have their own version. Uh, so the second document I wanted to show you guys is the personal statement document. Uh, this statement, it, this document is where I ask students to store their essays. So I always tell them like, you know, all of your essays, you should do them in a, a documents and then copy and paste them to your email because you never know your Wi-Fi can go down and you can like lose all of your doc your um, responses if you actually are working on the application itself. So I added all of the EOP essays here. I added the UC essays and then a little description at the very top. And then I also added the Common App essays. So um, this is just a one-stop shop for students to actually um, look at their uh, or work on their presentations and I always let them know like, you know, I'll, I'll be able to see this at any time because it's on my on my drive since I'm the Google Classroom Manager and you can share it with anyone else if you want them to review it or edit it. Uh, so that's um, 
that's the reason why I love uh, Google Class because I'm able to show students and um, different things and I'm able to have them work on it. So it's, it's a very interactive um, space for students. The last thing we wanna show you guys for student resources, uh, this is um, platforms for students uh, for us to provide um, information, right? So kind of like Google Classroom, but more, um, more, uh, more information, even more information for students and for parents. So we have Counseling Weebly, Google Sites, and Bemoji Office. I'm going to go ahead and highlight Counseling Weebly. Um, and it's, it's basically a website. It's a website for students. So I'm going to show you guys. Um, this is like the version where you go and edit. Um, but this is what the actual website would look like. So for this is our overfall website. So you'll see that I have announcements here. I have our Google Calendar for students. Uh, so we have like our workshops for today and the information's in there. I have uh, different flyers for students for scholarships and all on events and all of that stuff. So they're all in here. And then we have our school schedule and last just like other quick links, right? At the very top, there are also different, um, there's also different information here, including on our contact page. So on our contact page, I have all of my information and the remind codes for my class. And then if I click here, it'll take me to that online appointment system that I, sh I showed you guys earlier. It looks a little different in here. So um, that's kind of a reason why I really like the website because uh, you can always go in and make changes at any time. I'm going to show you guys how to make a, a few different pages really quick. Um, I do want to say that um, uh, this, it takes a little bit of time to understand how to use Weebly, but once you get the hang of it, it's, it's really helpful. So for our school, I also created a Puente website for our Puente students. And um, you, you'll see at the bottom here, this is, uh, these are the resources that I used on my other website. So um, you can feel free to like uh, um, add the same information to different sites. And um, for us, we have our parent meetings that we had earlier in the year. So they're all available in here um, as YouTube videos. Uh, and we have that information there. And then we have our contact page. So this is a very basic website that I actually just started this year, um, but I'm gonna show you guys quickly how to add a page. So to, uh, you would go to pages to add one, again, go to a plus sign and you would create a standard page. I don't like having um, a header, so I would say no header. And then if you use, um, if you don't click on hide in navigation, then, um, it will um, show up here. So if I unclick hide in navigation, it's gonna show up uh, on the navigation at the top. But if I unclick it, then it won't show up. And um, you'll just, it'll li be linked to some other part of your, um, of your class. So I'll say like counseling lessons here, um, just so that um, we have it available. So I'm gonna say don't hide in navigation. I'll click done. And um, to build it, you would go to build. Um, you can you can choose. So I always go to choose title, and I always uh, I'll use the same title. So I'll click on counseling lessons, and I will center it. Then after that, I can add e even more texts. So I'll say uh, counseling lessons are provided here. Ooh, I can't spell here and on Google Class. So. Um, that's kind of um, how you can use that. I can share an image here. Um, I can, uh, if you use the slideshow, you'll see the way that I added the slides earlier. So I'll just go here and I'll quickly add just, um, I'm gonna add this here. So this is like um, a person from CalSOAP that's helping us. So her information's in here. Um, and then at the very bottom, I can add a YouTube video. So if we go to YouTube and we can change, we can um, like rearrange the way we want everything to look like. So I can put it on the side, I can put it on the top or at the bottom. So if I go here, even like this text, I can choose to put it on the side over at the top of the counseling lesson or on the side. For YouTube, you would just go to the YouTube channel and you would link, put the link here and then it'll show up. 
Uh, so that's the cool thing about um, the website that it's always um, editable at any time for for counselors and um, it's just a really cool way to students to get all the information they need. So if you go, if I go back to our counseling sites, if I go to home, um, I have our senior counseling lessons here. So if I click here, the same lessons that I have in the Google Classroom, um, I have the YouTube videos. So I recorded them and I put them in here. So they're all available here. And I'll just at the top, I'll just be like all of the materials are in your Google Classroom. So um, the videos are here and I also add the videos to the Google class. So they have like different ways to find everything because I don't want them to be like, oh, I have to go here for this or here for this. I kind of just say like everything's available everywhere. So you don't have an excuse to like not see it. So that's the way I use Google, um, the Weebly and the, how I kind of make sure everything's connected in some way or another. And yeah, those are the tech tools that, that I wanted to mention. Um, Giselle wanted to talk a little bit about Bitmoji, so I'll hand it over to her. Thank you. Uh, I know that was a lot, guys. <laughs> a lot of information really quickly coming at you, but like uh, Ms. Chara said, don't worry about it. You're going to get an email with all of these resources. This meeting is also being recorded, so if you need to like go back and pause and look and see you know, uh, what was actually done, um, this will also be provided for you later today. Um, and we provided tutorials, like I said, for everything. So um, don't feel like, um, you know, you were, if you were writing down or taking notes, don't worry, we're going to provide everything for you. So I just really quickly want to talk about the Bitmoji office. It kind of goes with like the Bitmoji, um, I mean, like the Google Classroom that um, we covered earlier. Uh, but what I like about the Bitmoji office is obviously, you know, the Google Classroom is a little bit more for like teachers. Um, but the reason why I like it for counseling, like a Bitmoji office, obviously you can personalize it, make it like personal to you. But I also like, just like Ms. Chaya said, is everything's all in one place. Um, and what I also like about it is that you can embed different pages. So like if students want to come and just take like a five minute break or, you know, they need like different, you know, um, uh, you know, like calming down tools or if they need to, um, if they want to look at like some self care, you know, different self care tips, it's all on the page. So that's kind of what we're talking about, just like a hub or, um, you know, a, a home base um, for your students and this would be for your Bitmoji classroom would be more for, or your Bitmoji office would be more for students, but you can also create one for parents, um, you know, kind of use whatever you have already. So if your teacher, your point of teacher is already using the Bitmoji classroom, then maybe a Bitmoji office to go along with that would help. Um, so just, just wanted to put it out there if you needed it. So um, now really quick, we're gonna go into a breakout room. Um, <laughs> for about, uh, I think it's three or four minutes. Um, so we're going to go into a breakout room really quick and we're just going to talk about maybe, I know we went through them kind of quickly, but maybe one or two kind of tools that you feel um, that you covered today that you think would be helpful now um, and also in the future uh, for, you know, to communicate with your parents or your students um, or just to have like a hub or resources. So I'm going to have Anna put us in the break room for about three minutes, and then I'll give you a one minute warning when we're going to come back. But if anybody wants to share, you can go ahead and um, unmute yourself. What, well, we had to get the Dodgers out of the way first. Like, it wasn't enough time, you know? Like, so we have, we have to first acknowledge the important thing. No, I'm just kidding. I'm so, we were so happy, you know? All of us are Dodger fans, and we were so happy that they won last night because if they would have done a game seven, we would probably – I probably would have had a heart attack or something. I mean, it, it was so good, though. I agree with you, Tomas. I do. It was a it was a well needed distraction, and we were very excited. And there was lots of uh, celebration. I'm in Southern California. If you didn't know, I moved, and so there was fireworks and all sorts of craziness um, down here yesterday. So you're right, Tomas. Of course. Why didn't I put that at the very beginning? Right? I should have started with that. <laughs> um, but yes. Okay. So I'm just gonna go through quickly. Um, <laughs> um, that's funny. Uh, about the resources we talked about. So, um, like I said, you guys will get an email with all the wonderful things, um, but we do have a pre recorded video with you, um, I mean, for you. Um, if you click on the link, you'll have uh, access to this PowerPoint, obviously. So, everything that's embedded in it as well. 
Um, so we did a tour. It's about 28 minutes, I believe. Yeah, it's about 28 minutes long. Um, and we go through different virtual tours and how to do the virtual tours with your students. So you have a couple options. We have the YouTube video for you. So if you already have one of these platforms that Gabby showed you, like, you know, if you have a Google Classroom or a Weebly or a Canva, whatever, you can just upload the YouTube video, tell your students to watch it. We have an asynchronous, which means more like independent you know, like learning activity to go along with it, um, that you can just post up there, the PDF, and then the, you know, give them the YouTube link and they're good to go. Um, we're also going to give you the raw MP4 and if you wanted to, you know, edit it or, or, or do whatever you needed to do with it. Um, and so we have all of that for you. And then we also have another, um, it's called, we call it Cal Loteria. Obviously it's a play on words for the game Loteria. Um, and it has different cards. So the Loteria one is a little bit more for, I would say like my middle school or junior high students, uh, cause you do have to kind of go like step by step with them, obviously kind of like playing Loteria with them, um, and go through the, the presentation and kind of show them the different pieces. Now, all of this is virtual, um, for the Cal Loteria specifically, it actually, um, is a virtual tour given by Cal students. Um, and like I said, all the links will be there for you um, and you can walk the students through it. Uh, we also have a lesson plan for both of these. Um, if you want to do the virtual tours with the more asynchronous, more independent one, or if you want to do uh, the virtual tours, um, the Cal Loteria, which is a little bit more hands-on where you kind of have to present and walk the students through, um, then we have both those options for you. Um, and I think that's it, right, Gabby? Is there any yeah. questions? I don't know if there's, I know we covered a lot <laughs> in a short amount of time. Um, I quickly just wanted to say for the, um, this virtual tours video, I like to call it a virtual uh, tour prom promo video. Um, mm -hmm. We're not actually like showing a virtual tour. There is a, like a three minute like video, a really cool UC Merced video, but it's more like a resources type of um, YouTube video that you can show to your students. And it's, um, we're talking about how important it is to, for students to like go on tours and how, you know, it's unfortunate that we can't have like in-person tours, but virtual tours are available everywhere. And it's similar to this video where there are links, right? So we have links to the UC page for virtual tours, the CSU page for virtual tours, and just um, a bunch of other ones. And um, those links are also in the virtual tours bingo that's, that we provided as well. And this bingo game um, will give you an editable version so you can create your own questions and add your own links. Uh, so you can share this with students at any time and just to, to let them know like, hey, this is something that, that you should be, you should also be considering and, and taking time to do while you're working on your applications. And you can show it to juniors as well, um, any grade level really. Yes. Um, and if um, we didn't mention it before, there are other things like all the links, there are general links to like UC and CSU and, you know, all just general, but also we did want to highlight a couple um, campuses that we find that just data has shown that our Puentistas are a little bit more successful at, like, you know, obviously Cal, you know, UC Davis, UC Merced, all those different schools. And you'll see that in the presentation. Um, and obviously we tell the students that these are just you know, campuses that we know, you know, our students are successful at, but doesn't mean that they have to go to those. We just want them to explore those. So um, that's why we're also going to give you an editable version of the virtual co um, college tours bingo card. So if you wanted to like copy and paste your own questions in there that were specific, if you were doing, um, you know, something specific on like just CSUs or like just UCs, um, and you can change those around. So you can either use the one we provide for you, or you can edit it as well and put in your own questions that you have um, that are specific to your site or your needs. Um, some of the questions in here are specific to some schools, Ooh, because we know that those schools are the, the ones we highlight for Puente students. Correct, yeah. So we're just gonna hang out for a couple more minutes if anybody else has questions or any concerns. Um, if not, like I said, you'll be receiving later on um, an email uh, with um, all of these resources. As always, you know, you can reach out to me or, um, you know, so I can kind of, you know, help you troubleshoot or, or uh, refer you to whoever needs to um, support you in anything. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you so much for coming. Um, have a good rest of your day. 
you just know that we love and support you <laughs> um, and take care. And if there's any questions, you can just unmute yourself now. I did want to ask Gabby, um, cause I'm trying to think, I'm thinking about using Calendly or you can book me, which tool, um, cause you mentioned you can book me, but which tool I guess, would be the best uh, i'm trying to use it for puente interviews to schedule the interviews for like you know 100 people or whatever which one do you think would be come in handy more or maybe they're both the same uh, honestly i don't use calendly too much um i really like um you can book not me because like i said it merges to your google cal and um it's super easy for for them to remember as well like mine is chirisg.youcanbook.me so it's easy to like let them know the um the, the address right the web address mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's just a really good um tool because you can you have it for students and for parents um and you can you know change the questions and all of that so um i would go to for youcanbook.me um however when you're trying to create the account they're kind of trying to fool you because it says like start your 10-day free trial so they're assuming that like you know you're gonna have to pay after um but just um click on it and just uh, start the trial and you just make sure don't put any credit card information once those 10 days are up they're they're just gonna give you the basic version um which i've used for years now so um I, I would suggest you can book that me just because it's it's friendly to to all to parents and to students okay thank you so much you're welcome Any other questions? I guess just to add to that question, I, we just started using Calendly and um, it, it seems like we have to set up our calendar every month unless we pay. Is that something that happens with you can book.me? No, um, you can, for you can book.me, you, you can set it up once and you can change it at any time, but you don't have to do anything monthly. Um, you can just make, um, make it the way you want it from the start and make any changes at any time. Um, however you'd like. Thank you so much. And then for the hours, the changing the hours, you would do that on your Google Calendar because it syncs automatically. Mm -hmm. The tutorials are on there so you can see them as well. Yeah, and just to add on Maricruz for the, um, the whole Puente interviews, I know that um, we've been hearing about all these, you know, unique ways, especially like, you know, in the spring uh, <clears throat> and even in the fall. Uh, but I know that like they were, as far as the scheduling goes, like you can book me your calendar works, but also attached to the schedule, um, scheduling piece, the actual interviews. Um, I've been hearing like really good things about like Flipgrid, using Flipgrid, um, you know, to just kind of like have students and parents submit their, you know, their questions and their interview during through Flipgrid. Um, and that's been really successful too. Um, but just like attaching it to, but if it's, that's kind of why I think I like a little bit, you can book me too, because it goes to your Google calendar, but also if you wanted to do like a Google meets or like, you know, even like a zoom, it's easy to kind of put the link in there too for them. Thank you. 